I want to invite up to the front Diari. So Diari, if you want to uh, come and join me at the front this morning, she's the first of our mums who's going to speak. So let's give her a round of applause. She's very brave because she's got three young boys, but she tells me she's had a great night's sleep. So that's always good when it comes to, uh, to being a mum. But um, let me hand you your microphone. Um, so welcome, Diari. Thank nice you. to have you here. Uh, thank thank you. you for saying yes. <laughs> that's uh, the first thing. Hey, um... Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> apparently, apparently Brendan said yes on her behalf. But anyway, you're here, so I'm looking forward to it. Um, so... Can you maybe just sort of introduce yourself? So some people know you, maybe some that are with us today or online might not know too much about you. So just in a couple of minutes, sort of, you know, give us Diari's life story. Okay. Well, um, hi, everyone. Uh, I am from Madagascar. Um, I moved here 10 years ago after I married Brendan. Um, he's a missionary. He worked in Madagascar, and that's how we met. And... Um, um, I've got three boys, um, uh, <laughs> Chara, seven, Aru, three, two and a half, and Ezra is five months. Um, um, uh, that's, that's about it. <laughs> that's All right. about it at the moment. Yep. Yeah. Well, I grew up in a household with three boys, so I know how crazy that is, but we'll come to that. Hey, tell us about um, growing up in Madagascar. Um, how is that a, a different thing than, you know, here in Australia at the moment with, with your boys? Like, tell us about the differences, particularly as, you know, for kids. Yeah. Oh, it's a big, big difference. Um, yeah, it's obviously very much more laid back in Madagascar and um, here it's much more, you know, safer, but yet more stressful, if that makes sense. And, uh, <laughs> like, I, we used to be able to, in mine, I grew up, I, I was allowed to be minded by the neighbours and anyone really who wanted to mind me. And here it's hard to pass your kids to anybody unless you know their background. And so it's it's very isolated here when it comes to being a mum. Well, in Madagascar, it's more like everyone. It's everyone's children, I guess. So growing up here is privileged. And growing up in Madagascar is... Um, fun <laughs> it's, I don't know it's both fun but yeah um, it's more um, it's very very different I can't even compare it to be honest it's two different world and um, it's both um, is positive and negative I guess yeah. Yeah. yeah it's very much that you know that phrase it takes a village to raise a child yeah. you know in places like Madagascar yes. you actually literally have a village you know that are helping you and and I think it's one of the things that has been lost in places like Australia yeah. you know the the village is sort of you know is scattered everywhere which is a, a sad thing as a kid growing up what was relationship with mum like like what what did kind of mum model to you like were you close you know those kind of things yeah um well, my dad wasn't much in the background, like, yeah, so um, mum was being a mum and a dad, mostly, so she was a very, very good provider, but that made me, made us a bit neglected, so we were kind of raised by our babysitters more and the aunties than mum. So, um, uh, I guess we, 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 we are close, but there are many things we don't talk about, like, we don't talk about boys, we don't talk about anything when it comes to becoming a... I didn't even tell my mum that I had my period. Sorry, boys, I have to say. <laughs> I had to say it to my sister because I didn't feel close enough to my mum. And I was like, it's a secret. I'm having something going on. And then my sister straight away spoke to me, well, Mom, she's got something going on. <laughs> and I felt embarrassed. So we are not that close in that way. But um, she came here three years ago, two years ago when I had Aru, and that she spent three whole months here. So she was stuck with me. That's the longest time my mom spent with me, like one and one, because she wasn't, she wasn't allowed to go to work. So she was stuck with me, and we learned to know each other so much, and I understood more about, you know, how she functions, and she had to relearn me, like, how do I function? And, yeah, so, yeah, mom wasn't a typical Malagasy mom which mostly stay at home and mind the children. Mum was like, more like, 
she had me at 34. So basically, she al almost didn't even have children. Like, she was so focused on raising her younger siblings because she's one of eight, eldest single mom as well. So she had no time to, yeah, really focus on family and all that. Yeah. So how do you kind of feel, you know, now that you're a mum of three boys, how do you feel if it has indeed that sort of mum being there but also being absent a lot of the time, yeah. how has it shaped, I guess, your approach to, you know, parenting your kids to being their mum? Yeah, um, yeah, it's actually made me um, want to be in the moment more and um, appreciate, like, the little things, like, I need to learn to know my children more and um, be there more for my mum. So I'm, I'm very appreciative that I am allowed to, because she wasn't able to. It was not like she didn't want to, but she wasn't able to. So I was I'm appreciative that I'm allowed to stay at home and mind my children and not have to wake up and leave them, you know, you know, have to provide. So I'm very grateful with that. And um, yeah, so I do lots of little things with my kids, I guess, that I haven't had the chance to do with my mum. Yeah. And yeah. So what's maybe one or two of those, those things that, you know, you really, you really value being able to spend time with your kids to do that? Because I think sometimes we we can undervalue the little things, you know, we can we can sort of focus more as parents, you know, as mums and dads on kind of like the big events and we can celebrate those, but, you know, life in terms of, you know, parenting is made up of a whole bunch of little things, which yeah. I actually think have more of a an impact than the big things. Yeah. Um, I guess I think when the kids are sick, I always remember, I was always sick when I was, kid, when I was a kid, so... Um, I remember one day, my mum was there, but she constantly had to run and go to work. And one day I was like really, really sick and she was going to get up to bed again to go to work. And I said, can you stay with me a bit? Like, because I just needed that love <laughs> at that moment. So, sorry. I don't know why I'm not sure. Okay, sorry. So, um, <coughs> being able to be there for my kids when they're sick and just... Like, like they forget about Brendan when they're sick. Like, who are you? Get off! I want mom, and and it doesn't matter if I didn't sleep all night. It's like mom, mom, and you know. So being able to do that. Can we kind of talk about like faith and mothering? Because um, like being a parent is a big step. You know, like it's an exciting step, but it's also kind of like really scary. So I wonder, you know leading into becoming a mum, like what, what, were the, what were the God conversations you were having? Leading to becoming a mum? Yeah, so, so before, before you had your first child, so you were pregnant, you know, the first child was coming, life was going to change because, you know, you've gone from just being married to now being a mum and someone else to care for. Like kind of what are the, what are the God conversations you're having? Um... <laughs> Well, I was 21, 22 when I was pregnant of Shara, so that was pretty young. I know now how young that was, so um, I don't know. Um, I, I feel like it was a shock. I didn't realise what I was getting into, really. I always loved children and things like that, but I didn't really <laughs> realise how much of a responsibility it was going to be. Um, but the God conversation, what I really remember... Um, was uh, sorry guys my story's got a bit of some lots I didn't mean to but it's like I have to share like quite personal stuff because it comes into my mind as soon as he asks me the question so um, yeah my sister was the first one who was pregnant and then it was so exciting and you know I, we let down everything in, in Australia because we were here at that time and you know went back to Madagascar f just for the baby to be born and and it was a stillborn. So it was like the most, that's the first time I experienced um, panic attacks, waking up in the middle of the night, wishing it was not true, you know? So um, I remember praying to God, like, <laughs> I want a baby, I want to, because she had an emergency caesarean, and she could, the trauma, I don't know, I just felt like I needed a baby to bring some happiness to my family at that time. So that's how how Jara came along, not that we did not, I did, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> we got married when we were 21, 20, 
21, and we did not, not avoid being pregnant, but we did not get pregnant the whole first year. And then, yeah, after that, I prayed to God, you know, can it be nice if you have a little sunshine right now? It's a bit dark here. And then that's how we got Jara. So <laughs> I guess God provided in that way, yeah. Yeah, thank you for sharing. I know sometimes, you know, when, you, when you, you journey through, you know, those difficult seasons in life that it can be hard and it's brave for you to share it. So we, we thank you for that. Um, so first child, second child, third child. So three now, seven and under. So well done. <laughs> Speaking thank of bravery. <laughs> what have you, uh, you kind of, what have you learnt like about yourself in that seven year period since you first became a mum? I have realised that I was, I did not know what suffering was. <laughs> I had no idea what pain was, um, you know, unt until then, I guess. I mean, like the lack of sleep, childbirth, let's not even talk about that. And then, you know, the lack of sleep and um, anxiety. I've developed a pretty crazy anxiety since becoming a mom. I didn't even realise that, but I feel like I need to constantly protect my children. That's what I said, which is weird. Like. It's like God knew you need to raise your kids in Australia. You wouldn't be able to handle this if you were like, it's like your nature is very protective and, you know, and um, yeah, so I, am, um, I have I've matured a lot in, um, in my faith as well. Like I have to constantly hand it to God um, because, you know, I can't make my kid feel better. That's, I think, what's the hardest as a parent when they are sick. So, yeah, so I had to get closer to God and um, constantly praying and not, you know, um, be or go back to my knees no matter how tired and exhausted I am and I don't feel like it. And, but I know that's the only way it's going to work. <laughs> so, yeah. And is there any particular, like, Bible verses or passages that, you know, you kind of like, you have really helped you through, you know, those times of anxiety or those times where, as a parent, you want to help your kid, but in a sense, you're helpless. Yeah. Oh, um, Bible verse. Um, there is one that I actually wrote on my um, on the wall in my house. It's a shame I don't even remember where in the Bible it is, but it says, um, "I am always aware of the Lord's presence." Is it in Psalm? I don't remember. Yeah, it's just I'm always aware of the Lord's presence, and that. Um, yeah, just to be reminded that he's always there. Yeah. And I think that's a great word for all of us, you know, parents or not, you know, when we're going through those challenging times and, you yeah, know, we do feel fearful or we fear anxious that to remind ourselves that God is always with us. Um, you know, I kind of say to my kids, like, you know, God's with you and he's on the sideline and he's cheering you along and he's your biggest champion. Um, you know, no matter what you're going through, he's going to make sure that you get through to the other side. So your kids are fairly young, which is why I want to talk to you first. You're a young mum. What do you, how do you approach their future? You know, what do you, what do you hope for them? What, what do you and, and your husband, Brendan, what's like the important thing for you um, in terms of your kids? You know, let's look forward a little bit. Um, um, I guess um, for them to be healthy, um, mentally, especially, I, I don't know. Um, it's hard to raise, we've been like, experiencing that recently in Australia, how the kids are not socialising enough and all that. So we want them to be more like healthy, balanced, individual, I guess, in every aspect and be confident in who they are. And then from there, um, knowing who they are and knowing God. Of course, oh, Jara has a message from um, Brendan yesterday. Brendan sent him a message and uh, said, uh, good night, Jara. God bless you. I love you, my boys, just last night. And he answered and said, um, Amen. He said, Amen. I love you too. And that, I almost got to cry, you know, like, we've, it's past. It's past. He's seven. It's past. He knows, you know, uh, what to say. So um, I felt proud of that. So, yeah, that 
he they are close to God and that they know um, you know how to where to go to when trouble comes and to be confident that God's always there. Yeah. yeah. No, that's very very good. Hey, last question for you. I want you to share a mothering fail. So, because let's be honest, we don't get it right all of the time. (laughs) And uh, I'll put my hand up and say, you know, there's many, many times when, uh, you know, things didn't work out the way that I thought they would. So, is there kind of one thing where maybe you and Brendan laugh about it now and you're like, oh, yeah, remember when, you know, that happened and it was just kind of like a a mothering fail? Oh, (laughs) well, um, oh, there must be. <laughs> I'm just trying not to. She's mindful. One she's in a public space. <laughs> oh, seriously, um, what is it? I don't know. I can't think. Um, Obviously, a better parent than <laughs> than I am. If there's if there's no fails. Oh gosh, yeah, it's constant. So just yesterday, um, I. <laughs> I didn't even, we were supposed to go to a Mother's Day cafe, um, I mean, um, Mother's Day tea party at school, child school, and we got the, oh, see? (laughs) All right, Friday, so we've established it was Friday. (laughs) And, um, yeah, (laughs) so we, um, we, I, I, I didn't even know where the invite was, my friend, whose kids are also there. She's always the one I go to because I'm ashamed to call the principal because I keep forgetting everything. Like, when is it again? So I have to ask my friend what's happening and my friend's going to have to remind me. And she's like, well, there's days on Friday, don't forget. I'm like, where is the invite? Oh, somewhere in your, in your kid's bag. <laughs> so I was cleaning his room. It was under the bed. He didn't even give it to me. It's folded under the bed and I was like reading it. And I booked on the day if I could come on the day. And then we're like, okay. And then we went to go shopping. And then it was supposed to be at 2 o'clock. We were at Glendale at 1.55. <laughs> oh. So I booked and like, kind of like pleaded if I could come, even though it's late. Now I'm not even going to come because I forgot. So, yeah, that's what Brandon was, yeah. Yeah. Send a yeah. substitute. That's good. Yeah. Hey, can we say thank you to Diari for sharing this morning? Thank you, guys. And uh, great to hear from you. And, yeah, thanks once again. You know, with, uh, you. with three young boys, uh, I know that um, it's tough. You know, life is tough just generally. So we really appreciate you being able to take Thank some time you. today. Thank you for having me. Awesome. We are here for Mother's Day at Grace Church, just talking to three mums from church and uh, talking a little bit about uh, their mothering journey and what that looks like. And Leanne is joining us. Thank you, Leanne. Thank you for having me. How are you feeling? Hello, You're feeling, feeling confident? I'm just going to roll with it. Yes, <laughs> roll with it. So um, can we... We've got a lot to talk about, not too much time, unfortunately, but can we um, just do the, the summary of, for those that don't know, who is Leanne? Kind of like, what's, what's your life journey in a couple of minutes? It's probably a bit hard to squeeze all that in. I can just say I'm a child of God. (laughs) 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 That's in a nutshell. Um, Journey before Christ, after Christ, um, before Christ, a lot of mistakes, um, regrets, I guess, some, but learn a lot. Um, And then had a relationship with God and changed my world and life and made me a, a stronger person and somebody who God can use in many situations, um, which I've had to deal with over the years, pre-being a Christian. <laughs> so, um, like in the Bible, it says to raise your children up and that's the way they're going to be. But when you've made the first 20 years of your life a bit different, um, it makes it harder for the next 20. Um, but with God... He just heals a lot and um, brings in joy and peace and that's me in a nutshell. Well, tell us, tell us about the God encounter that, as you just mentioned, life really changed, you know, when you came to know Jesus and you accepted him as your saviour. How did that all come about? Um, 
Alpha dinner. I was doing a TAFE course at um, Arimba campus down there and um, in community welfare. And one of the ladies in there, she just, she lit up in that room. And, um, you know, she sort of, I didn't know at the time, but found out later she was a pastor. But, you know, I just was drawn to her. And um, there was a point there where um, glasses were needed by my children. And I approached my ex-husband's mother because she used to buy him presents and, and I said instead of buying him presents would it be okay if you can give me some money to buy their glasses or you know put towards it anyway um, I was upset one day because she said no ask your own mother um, <laughs> so I, I thought well and this lady come the next week with the money for the kids glasses and that act of kindness just really blew me away and then a couple of weeks later she invited me to an alpha dinner so that was my journey of searching and um, God, like, you know, and knowing that through that act of kindness, which blew me out of the water, um, <coughs> excuse me, um, yeah, it just sort of um, opened up a new world to me, um, a, a new life, actually. So, yeah. yeah. Well, and it's amazing that even though you didn't know what it was at that point of time, that there was something about this woman that was attractional. Um, you know, and that very much is, is, is the heart of this church, is that we can be the light of Jesus in the world. We don't have to necessarily say anything, but when the world sees Jesus in us, then we get the chance to have those conversations or, you know, to display that act of generosity. And we're just making such a difference when it comes to the communities where we live and the communities that we serve. So tell us about your kids how many, how old, because I can't remember. I've got six of my own. I've got enough trouble to remember my own kids' names. I have four, four children, three, three boys and a girl. Um, I've got six grandchildren and one on the way. Um, my eldest is, you're going to trick me too. <laughs> He's 45 this year. Um, next one down is, there was 10 years difference. He'll be 34 this year. Um, the next one down, 30 three this year and then 32 this year or 31 yeah I can't remember no either. one's fact checking so <laughs> we're just going to say okay that's great yeah no, no no problem um so I don't want to co concentrate so much on kind of you know when your kids were young um but more I guess in the last few years for you because I, I know that it's been like a tough road as a as a mum and a, a single mum um do you want to share as much as you're comfortable in terms of what mothering has looked like for you, say, over the last four or five years? Well, mothering for me over the last four or five years has um, been a bit like being hit by a Mack truck and at another time a bit like a, being hit by a freight train. Um, but in that, God's strength, that's where I get it from. Like, you know, my faith is in Christ and I know who I am in Christ. And um, the saying that, you know, Satan prowls around like a roaring lion is so true because he wants to devour whoever he can get. And um, at that point, I've got a... My eldest son um, has been in and out of prison um, probably about four times over the last ten years. Um... It's been a journey. I, I've visited nearly every prison in the state. <laughs> and um, my prayers were always, God, make him the man you want him to be. That's my prayers and protect him, keep him safe, but make him the man you want him to be. Um, visions that I've had of him over the years have been he would come out of prison and he'd be okay for about three months and then he'd go back to his way of life and um, it was really hard one time but God gave me a picture of a black pool and he um, would come out of prison and he'd get out of that pool and he'd have all this black stuff just dripping off him and he'd take a few steps and then he'd sort of look ahead look behind and then it'd be dripping off him but then he'd run and jump back into the pool because that's what he knew that's the comfort that he had those people that he hung around with, the way of life, which was drugs, alcohol, um, sexual, immoral, 
you know, um, just those things that kept him snared. But because he was more comfortable with that black pool than the future, but praise God, God's got him. <laughs> he's still in prison. He'll be released in January, and um, he's a man of God. And, um, you know, the letters that I've got from him over the, the years um, have just been amazing because he's taken responsibility of um, who he is and what he's done. And in the years gone by, there was never any remorse, but there is now. And I know God has changed him and I've always been there for him. Um, I send him $50 a fortnight. It's not much, but it's what I can do. And he rings me once a week and, you know, he's, he's just tells me to never change, to always be who I am. And, you know, he said, he, um, I'm one of the most amazing people and I just sort of that that has changed so much yeah can I ask before we talk about the other kids um, or, or you know what else has been going on how how do you stay the amazing mum that you are because you know sometimes particularly when our kids are adults you know we we, we release them and and they've got to make their their own choices and you know the consequences that come with that but how, how do you continue to love and support when you know the choices that kids are making are bad choices and you know the consequences that come will be negative, you know, whether it's in jail or, you know, something else? My favourite scripture is I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me and I live my life by that. Um, but also, I mean... Years ago, if I got hurt, I'd, I'd hold it in. I'd, I'd put it down to my toes. I'd, I'd dwell on it. I'd be angry about it, what, whatever. But like now, it's, it's God, I can't do this. I, I give this over to you. And I mean, I don't know how many times I actually had to pick Nathan up physically and visually as a young man and give him over to Christ because I kept picking it back up again but it's given it to God. I mean, we can't fix it. There's a song by Plum, which I, it's my daughter's song, but I can't fix you and I can't change you, but God has got him in the palm of his hand. So that's how I, I live it, is by giving it over to God because I can't change it. Now, you, you mentioned that um, Nathan is released in January, so it's just a few months away. Are you fearful that he, he may return back to the, you know, that, that black pool that you were talking about? I'm not fearful because I honestly believe in my heart of hearts that God has changed him from the inside out because um, his choices will still be his choices. Um, but he may not be able to come back to the area um, because of victims. Um, so I may not see him for another couple of years, as in I will be able to go and visit him, but not in my home. Um, but no matter what, it's still his choices. So I can't be fearful of the future. Like, you know, I mean, if I was fearful of the future, I'd be locking myself in a, in a, in a room in a box, I think. Um, <laughs> you know, because I can't be fearful of the future. I believe God has changed him from the inside out. And that's up to God to take that and, you know, um, and what, no matter what happens, I will still love him. Can you give us a picture or paint a picture for us of what that change looks like? Like, how, how do you see how God has worked in your son's life? Because it's quite easy for someone to say, oh, mum, I'm different, you know, but you can see it. I haven't seen him. I've only seen him once because he's moved way down south and um, it's I think God's done that for a reason. Um, but I saw him once and just the letters that I get. I don't get letters all the time, but I get them. And the scriptures, he reads, I give him a scripture and not like to search in his Bible. He reads the word. He's done, um, um, he's done a 12-month or 18-month course on why he bit was violent, like, you know, why he did what he did, you know. So he's changed his mindset. God has put him in a place. 
he, 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 do, he goes to chapel, he reads word every day. So I know God has got him, but it's up to him when he steps out of that prison and three months, because that's what it's always been. There's a three month, I don't know why, but there was a three month of go and then going back to what he used to do. So it's up to him to go forward. And that's what I just keep speaking that over him. The prayers that I pray over him are those prayers that God will keep him. And when I, when I say goodbye to him, I tell him I love him and God bless him. And, you know, God will keep you safe, but keep your eyes on God. That's what I say on when we finish our phone call. Yeah, good advice for all of us, I think, you know, not, not just for our kids. Now, you mentioned Philippians 4.19 is one of the verses, you know, that you hold on to. You so uh, <laughs> it's one of the ones I do know. So, so when Diari was speaking, I'm like, that sounds like a psalm, but I don't know exactly which one. So I didn't um, speak there. But what else do you, like, what other promises of God do you hold on to and have held on to, you know, with, with all that's sort of gone on um, in your family over the last few years? Just that he loves me, just the way I am. And he changes me all the time. Like, I'm, I'm like the potter. God's the potter. And I'm the, I'm, I'm the wheel, and he's forever changing me. And sometimes it's not comfortable being changed. It's, it's heartbreaking. But he, he, he just keeps changing me, and these things come into my life. Um, I have another son in prison, and a daughter who's married a wife and do I love them? Yes, I love them and I'll never stop loving them. I have a granddaughter I don't ever get to see because I'm not allowed to. I've had daughter-in-laws who um, have, have, I always swore that I'd never um, uh, reject my daughter-in-laws because my mother-in-laws rejected me and I thought I will never do that but now in the last year they've rejected me and it's He's forever pushing and changing and moulding me. And it's like I just keep giving it over to him because I can't fix it and I can't change it. But he has got me in the palm of his hands. And he hugs me. He's my husband. He's my, my best friend. He's my all. So when you're single and you're taking care of your kids, it's not easy. But with God, he's there. And, yes, sometimes you need someone with skin on, but... You know, it's like he's, he never will leave me or forsake me. And I know that within my heart of hearts. So, and, you know, once you've got that and once you know who you are in Christ, it comes at you, but you stand. But sometimes I think you've got to keep pushing forward as well. Yeah. Very much an inspirational lady. Hey, I wonder um, if you can just speak a, a word of encouragement for, for mums, for grandmothers, um, for mums-to-be, what is kind of one piece of Leanne wisdom that maybe that um, will help them on the, the journey? Because it's tough, isn't it? Yeah, it is tough. Um, love. Love one another. You might be have your differences. You might have your your disagreements, you might even get angry, but what you do with that anger is what, what it's all about. Like, you know, we, it's okay to be angry, it's okay to be upset, but just love one another. Love covers all sin. And I mean, when you've got God's love, he's, he's your, you don't need anything else. Like, he's got you, no matter what the world throws at you. I mean, I love all the martyrs gone before, you know, because I think, you know, I don't know that I could do that, but when you stand in Christ, he gives you the strength to do that. And this world's a pretty yucky place. <laughs> I mean, let's face it. But, you know, love. Love one another.